Uh, a couple of things. One, uh, I was watching C-SPAN and a guy wrote a, a book, a uh, brand new book, and it was mainly about McCarthy, but it was kind of tied in with Whitaker Chambers. And he was saying much of what happened to Whitaker Chambers happened to McCarthy. And he was saying things I had never, ever heard. Everything I'd ever heard in college and everything I ever read was McCarthy. He was this evil monster and he was falsely accusing everybody. This guy's talking and all of the other stuff that they had along with uh, uh, Whitaker Chambers. And uh, another thing he talked about was with Whitaker Chambers in, well, maybe with Whitaker Chambers, it was part a lot of partisanship that it was the Democratic administration. They were terrified to, to say that all these moles of the Soviet Union are in their administration so that that complicated the matters. Um, the, uh, the one thing I, that you said, although I think this is a phenomenal program, this is just so enlightening, but you said uh, the, the exerting influence over others uh, that was, you know, was somehow a, a negative. Uh, that's why I understood it. Maybe I got it wrong. But it seemed that, that Whitaker Chambers, that the power that he had was going against the powerful. Every every bit of the power, and I've seen this over and over. And you, you get power together, and power becomes taboo to disagree with. Um, to when, when, when they've got everything and you've got nothing and you're, you're trying to speak to power uh, is the most difficult thing. It's terrifying to people. Having a group uh, disagree with the group is terrifying. A powerful group did everything on your side and trying to influence them, to me, is the height of courage. Uh, and, you know, so maybe I got that wrong in terms of your, your view. No, I, I, I mean, just, uh, I think uh, Chambers did, uh, did demonstrate tremendous courage. But I also think that the, at the end of the day, why he prevailed, first, as every parent tells children, tell the truth. And Chambers was telling the truth. Um, but I also think that, and this is why it's such a powerful witness, he was willing to go forward and put all at risk to simply say, this is what it was. And the humility of that weakness in other words, really almost in one sense, I'm putting it all at risk. I'm not going to hold back. You know, I want my job, my, at that time, $30,000 a time is a big number. Uh, well, I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to parse some of what I say here because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go too far down this line. He literally let the truth come out. And it was the, and this is why when you, when you read the book, and you see all these people swirling around, and all the best people really beating up chambers, and how can this, you know, uh, all sorts of accusations were made about him and uh, the, the, the worst sort. But it really is the humility of just, and the, in, in one sense, it's the paradox of weakness. And it's why you die to, to live and you serve to lead and you give to receive and so many other things. Because at that point, that then becomes the greatest power. And that's what Chambers demonstrated. When I'm talking about in the sense in which, in, in this question about whether um, uh, you, there are different attributes of communism around, if you again go to the deepest part of what the struggle is, it's the struggle in the human heart to dominate others and to change them, rather than really what, frankly, the oldest philosophy teaches, which is that you have to die to yourself rather than imposing yourself. And those two different versions of the world bring forth two very different kinds of communities. And you see different aspects of each one of them all around the world and in every family. And in every family because it is the nature of who we are as people. And that's why grace and love, and forgiveness, all of those attributes, first of all, they're hard to develop. You know, I used to, as Randall said, coach Little League Baseball, you know, you take the kids out of in April and it's cold, it's windy, and it's all that sort of stuff. These kids are all bundled up and whatever you're supposed to be catching these fly balls or feeling these grounders, getting up there and hitting, and they're missing the shot, you know, they're missing the ball, dropping the ball, whatever it may be. And then by July, you know, if you got a good little team, you know, coaches with you and whatever, all of a sudden they're feeling the grounders and they're doing these things because you practice with them. You you work on their grounders, you work on their hitting, you work on their catching. Those habits to be a good ball player are really the same thing of the habits of our hearts. We spend so much time on the external things and so little time 
on developing the habits of our heart, and that's what will shape a different kind of politics, a different kind of community that brings freedom, really, the kind of sustainability that I think is the natural order of what God calls us to be. Thank you all very much.